Brothers and sisters, Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala says in Surah Al-Ankabut, أَحَسِبَ النَّاسُ أَنْ يُتْرَكُوا أَنْ يَقُولُوا آمَنَّا وَهُمْ لَا يُفْتَنُونَ Do people really think they will be left alone to say we believe and they will not be tested? وَلَقَدْ فَتَنَّ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ فَلَا يَعْلَمَنَّ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ صَدَقُوا وَلَا يَعْلَمَنَّ الْكَاذِبِينَ And we have certainly tested the people before them so that Allah may see and know who is truthful in their claims of faith, in their claims to faith and who were the liars. Allow me to begin by sharing a story with you that no matter how plugged in you are, you will not hear on the news. This is the story of a Palestinian child, a child from Palestine with tremendous faith that was abducted away from his parents and subjected to human trafficking and sold despite his prestige on the slave market and then falsely accused and as a result left to die in prison. But Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala had another plan for him. Allah the blessed and exalted transformed his condition entirely and granted him global power and brought back to him his brothers who were the reason for it all who betrayed him and his parents who were longing for him. This is the story of Surah Yusuf. This is Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam, isn't it? The story that reminds us that behind every last event is the wisdom of the divine subhanahu wa ta'ala and just as Allah azza wa jal had a plan for Yusuf alayhi salam he also has a plan for al-masjid al-aqsa and the people of Palestine and just as Allah azza wa jal gave a chance at the very end for those brothers who betrayed him to be forgiven and redeemed perhaps there is still a chance for so many of the Muslim nations and Muslim individuals to be forgiven and redeemed for where they felt short with regards to Palestine. And after the story of Yusuf in that surah, Allah ends it by saying right towards the conclusion to the Prophet wasallam, who was facing at the time so much atrocity, so much persecution, حَتَّى إِذَا اسْتَيْأَسَ الرُّسُلْ وَظَنُّوا أَنَّهُمْ قَدْ كُذِبُوا جَاءَهُمْ نَصْرُنَا This was the same way with the previous nations, O Muhammad. Things continued to look bleak, continued to look dark, until hope was lost or nearly lost. And they thought they were denied. No one was ever going to support them. Our support came out of nowhere. Our support came and changed the entire situation. And so when it looks bleak and dark and things become too difficult to be optimistic, we have to be able to see through that darkness. That is now our test with the light of the Quran. You know when the Muslims were massacred at Uhud and their bodies were mutilated and the Sahaba, may Allah be pleased with them, said, we never saw the Prophet ﷺ cry the way he cried for his uncle Hamza, seeing what happened to his body. At that time when the Qur'an addressed the situation and said to them, قُلْ لَوْ كُنْتُمْ فِي بُيُوتِكُمْ لَبَرَزَ الَّذِينَ كُتِبَ عَلَيْهِمُ الْقَتْلُ إِلَى مَضَاجِعِهِمْ Say to them, O Muhammad, even if you all had remained home, those who were destined to die are going to meet what was written for them. They were going to die in their homes anyway. Addressing a completely different dynamic. Allah said about Uhud. What happened? He didn't say you left the hill. He said you disobeyed. Because it wasn't the hill that was protecting you. It was the obedience to Allah that was protecting you. And then Allah consoled them after these events with more ayat regarding Uhud. And he revealed to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Sahaba, وَكَأَيِّم مِّن نَبِيٍّ قَاتَلَ مَعَهُ رِبِّيُّونَ كَثِيرٍ So they will be many before you, O Muhammad. And inshaAllah, they will be many of your followers, O Muhammad, that are like this. May we be of those people. Due to the faith that flares inside of us in the likes of these events, we are not broken. We will never be broken. The fact that they did it for Allah. The fact that Allah loves the patient. So I'll be patient. At the end of the day, Yusuf after it all, it wasn't just happy because he got his victory. He said, وَتَوَفَّنِي مُسْلِمًا Oh Allah, just allow me to die a Muslim. That's the prize. Allow me to meet you knowing that you love me. That's it. That's all that matters. And if you want inspiration for this, this is what blows our minds sometimes. Look at the people of Gaza today. We're sitting here wondering, how are things going to unfold for us thousands of miles away? Because we're speaking up a word of truth. 
and refusing to be intimidated, refusing to be bullied. They're over there saying, so what if I spent 40 years building my house with my life savings? They're rocks, rocks get rebuilt. So long as my womb is functional, I'll make more babies. Is the interview over? I need to go bury 20 of my relatives. You think I ch- I, I'm forced to be here? I have a citizenship in America and in Europe and in Finland and I'm not going anywhere. I'm stationed here, honored by Allah to be a follower of Muhammad, to be a believer in the Quran. You will never break me. Isn't it something to stop at? The fact that they are the ones inspiring us now because that's what faith does when the events come. This is the beauty of the events. They feel the presence of the angels around them. And then the ayah right after Allah says how many prophets and God-fearing people alongside them never lost hope, never lost heart. The ayah right after it says what? It's truly an unusual ayah. Very unexpected. It says, وَمَا كَانَ قَوْلَهُمْ And their statement, they said nothing but. These people that were afflicted so much and never gave up, they said nothing but, رَبَّنَا اغْفِرْ لَنَا ذُنُوبَنَا O oh, our Lord, forgive us for our sins. وَإِسْرَافَنَا فِي أَمْرِنَا And our trespasses against ourselves. وَثَبِّتْ أَقْدَامَنَا وَانْصُرْنَا And keep our feet firm and give us victory. The last thing you think about when you're being subjugated, when you're being oppressed is my sins, right? This ayah comes to tell you, be careful of the sense of entitlement. I know I'm submitting to Allah on my terms, not His terms. But the greatest factor ultimately is for you to never lose your spirit, never to lose hope. You constantly now are going to know that Allah has not disowned you. And Allah Azza wa Jal gives these Sahaba and us by extension, this example of the people before you that even though they knew they weren't imperfect, Allah called them righteous people that were loved by Allah for their patience. Yes, there's a lot of things to do. Yes, we're going to push back against the hypocrisy of the media. Yes, we're going to stand for justice no matter what happens. But at the end of the day, thank Allah that He has caused your faith to flash a little bit. You know what's happening on the ground now, you may or may not notice, is very different. Ten years ago, there are people who would have been totally on the other side of the propaganda b- machine that are starting to open their eyes. And so we have we have a duty right now, a greater duty than ever. Not just to change the opinions of the people, but that's a part of it. And that's why I spent the majority majority of this khutbah is speaking about the biggest part of it. Changing your opinion of Allah. Fortifying your relationship with Allah. Remembering that He is the everlasting. He's the only one that doesn't fall. You know the Soviet Union fell, didn't it? And its communist regime. You know the communists of Eastern Europe fell. The apartheid in South Africa fell. Zionism one day will fall as well. But that may happen in your lifetime. It may not happen in your lifetime. So you're going to fix what you can, what's most important in your lifetime between you and Allah through these events. And then you're going to serve pass the baton with dignity during that span of your life of yours. Only through that first major fundamental centerpiece of your faith, your confidence in Allah, will you ever continue pushing? Will you ever make dua confidently? Will you continue to remind your kids with a sense of responsibility? They have to receive it with honor as well. Will you continue to try to push back against the narrative and adjust the algorithm just a little bit with your shares? Will you continue to adjust your life? Why do you think the protests are being pushed back against? Because they're effective. Why do you think this boycott and divest and sanction movement is being pushed back against? Because it works. That was a big part of, by the way, the South African apartheid and how it fell. There is so much you can do, but start inside and then push in whatever direction Allah has permitted for you. Donate through legitimate means, raise your voice, increase in every sort of advocacy you can and make sure this spirit of ours, make sure this creed of ours, make sure this faith of ours between you and your children is never fumbled. May Allah Azza wa Jal honor us with this mission. May Allah make us people that push for peace wherever we go and care about justice wherever we go and defend the lives of the innocent even if it inconveniences us wherever we go.